Hello and good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life. We are glad you could join us for worship today. Hello, I'm Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life, and I'm also glad you could join us for worship today. I'm David Evans, interpreter. Dorothy saying, good morning. Today is April 25th, the fourth Sunday of Easter. We will continue to celebrate Easter for three more weeks. Throughout Easter, we will continue to proclaim that yes, Christ is alive, Alleluia. Even though the world around us tells us that death is everywhere, Christ is risen, Alleluia. So if you still have some confetti left from your torn up paper chains that we made in Lent, go ahead and use that every time we say Alleluia. Throw some confetti in the air. My friends, today in worship, we are amazed that the Holy Spirit comes to us and gives us power and hope to continue to share this hope and promise of new life. And while we here in Minneapolis this week do breathe a sigh of relief that our justice system found Jer Derek Chauvin guilty in the death of George Floyd, we at the same time continue to hold our breath again and again, because Thursday was the funeral for another black man killed by the police here in Minnesota. His name is Dante Wright. Since the start of the trial of Derek Chauvin back on March 29th, police across the US have killed at least 64 people. And more than half of those people who were killed are people who are either black or Latino. God mm -hmm. help us, we pray. And today we pray also for the earth and we give thanks God for how the earth sustains life, all sorts of life, plants and animals and people, our waters, the fish and, and creatures that live in the water, the whole world. And we pray too that we people the people on this earth would have resolve and dedication to live simply and to care for the earth. And again, with this in mind, we just say, God, help us, we pray. Pastor Michelle, Christ is risen. Congregation, 
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Hallelujah. Congregation, let our praises ring. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Prayer for the day. God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the movement of that Spirit so we may know your leading in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's Bible reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. I'll be reading from the contemporary English version. On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from heaven, like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were meeting. And then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions, and a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone, and they began speaking in whatever languages the Spirit let them speak. Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the noise, a crowd gathered, but they were surprised because they were hearing everything in their own languages. They were excited and amazed and said, don't all these who are speaking come from Galilee? Then why do we hear them speaking our very own language? People were from all over. Some were born Jews, others have chosen to be Jews. Yet we hear them all using our own languages to tell the wonderful things God has done. Everyone was excited. Some were confused and even kept asking each other, what does all of this mean? Others made fun of the Lord's followers saying they are drunk. Peter stood with the 11 apostles and spoke in a loud, clear voice to the crowd. Friends and everyone living in Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I have to say. You are wrong to think these people are drunk. After all, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what God had the prophet Joel say. 
when the last days come, I will give my spirit to everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will have dreams. In those days, I will give my spirit to my servants, both men and women, and they will prophesy. I will work miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will turn dark and the moon will be as red as blood. All this before the great and wonderful day of the Lord appears. Then the Lord will save everyone who asks for his help. Word of God, word of life. Amen. For today's sermon, I want to tell a story of forgiveness. There was a woman in Africa who lived with her husband and her son. Her son was taken and murdered. Sometime later, the same man came and took her husband. The wife tried to follow, and when she found her husband, he was bound. They poured gasoline on him, and the last words the wife heard her husband say were, Father, forgive them, and he was set on fire and died. That man was later arrested. His name was Van de Brock. He was brought to trial. A member of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission asked the woman, what do you want us to do? How should justice be done to this man? The woman said, I want three things. First, I want to be taken to the place where my husband's body was so that I can gather up his ashes and give the remains a decent burial. Second, I want Mr. Van de Brock to come to my house every month and stay with me all day so that I can pour out whatever love I have remaining on him since he took my husband and my son. Third, I would kindly ask somebody to help me up to lead me over to Mr. Van de Brock so that I may give him a hug to let him know that he is truly forgiven. As the court assistants led her over, being an elderly woman, Van der Brock was so overwhelmed that he fainted. The point of sharing this with you is that we have to keep going. That requires forgiveness, that requires love, it requires not giving up. That is a powerful and beautiful story I just shared. And it reminds me of how God is with us. God knows that the world is a messy place. God could give up on the world, but God doesn't. God kept going and even sent us the Holy Spirit. Now, the devil wanted to stop Jesus. 
And so Jesus was arrested, crucified, and died. And when he was buried, the devil thought he had won until three days later, he rose. Jesus had not given up. He had kept going. This shocked the devil, and he left. Bye, devil. Not today, Satan. During the 40 days that Jesus remained on earth, he reminded his disciples that God will send the Holy Spirit as he continued to show himself to them and to others. So what did the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit helps us keep going. And it does that by reminding us very gently to not give up, to continue to teach us and to show us the way, to comfort us, to guide us, to support us, and so many other ways to be with us. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, I don't know that we could keep going. But the Holy Spirit helps us keep going. So now, what do we do? What should we do? We need to stop, we need to look, and we need to listen. And this means we need to learn. We have to keep our hearts, our minds, and our souls open to the world around us. For example, I recently read a news article talking about how uh, President Biden is probably going to remove our troops from Afghanistan coming up in this September. As I kept re reading the article, I noticed it talked about the women in Afghanistan are terrified about this. They're very worried. And the reason being is that since American troops have been in the country for about 20 years, they've kept it under control and there's been peace. With President Biden saying it's time for the troops to return home, that could change. For the past 20 years, women and girls have been able to go to school to get an education, to go to the university, to become teachers themselves, to work in a variety of fields. The women in Afghanistan are worried that the rights that they have gained since the troops have been there will be taken away once the troops leave and that they will go back to the way things had been before. By way of analogy, if we look back prior to the 1960s at our own deaf community, we got along okay, but in the 1960s, we found out that the way that we communicated sign language was actually American sign language, that it was a real and true language. We didn't know that before. We just thought we had bad or broken English. Technology advances happened and our community moved forward. Would we be interested in going back to life prior to the 1960s? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to. This is how the women in Afghanistan feel. They've made so much progress in the past 20 years, they don't want to return to the way things were. Because the way things were, were that women worked in the house. They were not out allowed to leave the house alone. They always had to have a male or someone else accompanying them. Girls were not allowed to get an education. They were very oppressed. 
often abused and taken advantage of physically and sexually. And so the women in Afghanistan are worried. They're afraid that life is going to return to how it was before the US troops arrived. As I was thinking about this, I noticed parallels here in our own country. People of color here in the United States struggle a lot more than those of us who are white do. As I talk about keep going, not giving up, that's a much harder task for black and brown people than it is for those of us who are white. And until George Floyd's murder last year, which caused riots and brought the attention of the world to our own back door here in Minnesota. Now, some of us may feel like we wanna hide, bury our heads in the sand, close the shades, lock the door, not be a part of any of that. But last week, when the guilty verdict was announced, people of color wept in the streets, they danced, they hugged, there was joy. I saw one person on television say, I've never felt this way before. This is a new experience for them to finally feel like they may have gotten some justice. It's a moment of, at last, Justice really just means that we all keep going together, that we're able to keep going together. We can do together what alone we cannot. So as the world looks at Minnesota, I hope that they're able to learn something from us. I hope that some good can come out of this situation that we've been through as a community. And it helped me to realize how important it is that we keep going and not give up. Because if we don't, who's going to help those who struggle and suffer? The system is designed to keep people back, certain people. And we cannot turn a blind eye to that. We have to stand with our brothers and sisters, our siblings, and help them keep going, just as we keep going. Black and brown people cannot keep going in the same ways that those of us who are white can. And so we need to stand and walk with them. So I'd like to suggest five things that help us keep going and help us help others keep going as well. The first is not giving in to fear. God has given us a spirit of peace. The second is to stop, look, listen, and learn. Third is to pray. Fourth, keep moving forward. And as you do, help others move forward as well. And then finally, be supportive. The good news is that you don't have to do all of these things by yourself. You have the Holy Spirit with you and in you to help you keep going. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I know it will be a challenge. And the temptation to stop and to give up will be there. 
But if you keep going, you will learn something. And the journey is worth it. Follow where the Holy Spirit leads. In the Bible, Paul faced many barriers, but he kept going. There are two statements from his experience that I want to share with you. These are found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. And they say, We are afflicted in every way, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. God is with us. When we are pushed down, we stand up again. Prayers for the people. Lord Jesus Christ, you conquered death. You rose from the dead and are alive forevermore. Help us remember and experience your loving presence here with us. Help us remember you are with us. Whenever we feel confused and overwhelmed, you are here to guide and to direct us. Whenever we feel sorrow, you are here to comfort and counsel us. Whenever we feel tempted, you are here to strengthen and inspire us. Whenever we feel lonely, you are here to encourage and befriend us. Whenever we or our loved ones encounter death, you bring all of us to glory on the other side of this life. Help us remember and live so that the hope of resurrection will show through our lives. Amen. Master Michelle, may the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Master Michelle, and now, those of you at home, please share the peace with one another, which might mean sending a text, an email, a handwritten note, but take a moment to share the peace. And at this time, we invite you to prepare your offerings, your financial support for Bread of Life. Because as we celebrate Easter, 
we trust this amazing promise that death is not the end of the story. And here at Bread of Life, God calls us to share this hope and this promise with the deaf community and with their loved ones. The promise and hope that God loves you. And so we ask you to give generously to Bread of Life and the work that we do together. And we ask that you would send a check to Bread of Life. Uh, just to let you know, we do check our mailbox multiple times a week. Or you can give online. And so you can find um, all the information that you need on our website. <clears throat> and the website address is www.breadoflifedeaf.org. Thank you for your generosity. An offering prayer. God, you come to us. Now receive these gifts and our lives. Congregation, we lift our hearts to you as you lifted Jesus up from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from death to life. Amen. Now we invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer with us. This will be done in ASL with no English voiceover. Before we go, receive this blessing. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and hope. As you have been transformed, by the power of the cross, go forth into the world and share the good news. God loves you. We go in the name of the Creator and of the Savior and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace 
share God's good news. God loves you. Congregation, thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.